guys, it's Kayla here. Welcome back to my channel and this is Reading with Kayla and today I'm going to be doing a book haul video. <laughs> book hauls are always fun, okay, because you get a crap ton of books and it's just so such a joy to buy books. I know you know what I'm talking about. Whether you're buying books at full price, which can be painful, but it can also be amazing because they're brand new and they're beautiful or you get them like at a thrift store or secondhand store or whatever used books. Ugh, those are my favorite because of the price and it's like searching for treasure. I don't know, it's really weird. But I have a book haul video and I bought a bunch of books from Goodwill recently and I am going to share them with you. <laughs> so yeah, this is my big old bag. So yeah, I'm really excited. How many books did I get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I got ten, this is a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna stack them over here. Okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> okay. So, first book up is Becoming Jane Austen by John Spence. So, this book is in wonderful condition. Like, it is brand spanking new, you know, just beautiful. Originally, it is. $15. I think I got it for like a dollar. So woohoo. Um, I personally love the classics and I have a love for Jane Austen. I do. I love learning about, I really like learning about authors. I have biographies, I have memoirs and stuff, but I really don't have that many that are actually about authors, writers, or anything like that, but I love learning about them. And so when I saw this book, I was like, yes, oh my gosh, I really really want this so it's a biography of Jane Austen you know and it's uh, it says it paints a vivid picture of her world her situation her circumstances her rejected suitors her experiences and it's just amazing uh, so so I get to know her her world her inspiration for her novels and stuff like that so yeah I'm really excited about this one I can't wait to read this one and it's a decent sized book you know and so I don't know, I'm really, I'm excited about it. So so that's number one. Um, just put it there on the floor. Um, second book I'm super excited for, and I have been looking for this book for so long and I never wanted to buy it full price. I don't know why, but I was so glad I found it, okay? Uh, the Jungle by Upton Sinclair. Oh, sorry, I have a ring light, so it's kind of like, eh. anyways. The Jungle by Upton Sinclair. So I first heard about this book when I was a junior or a senior in high school. I don't know. I had U.S. I had U.S. history with Mrs. Shemansky. <laughs> I can't believe I remember that. I don't remember anyone's names. But I first heard about that book, about this book in that class. And it was interesting because what I remember was that this guy kind of snuck into the meat meat industry back in the day and he kind of wrote this book called The Jungle and it's like a it, it just reveals all the horrible things about the meat packing industry or something like that and then things change for the better right but I really wanted to read it and it doesn't really sound like something I usually want to read but I did so I'm gonna read the back of it it doesn't really say what it's about it says the uncensored original edition lost for over 80 years so this one just says unavailable for decades this uncensored edition contains 36 chapters rather than the 31 in the expurgated edition the restored material includes Sinclair's most pointed political commentary and additional shocking scenes from the meatpacking industry so I guess there was some really shocking things that he found out and this was just like a tell-all you know expose kind of thing so I was like oh I want to know how bad the industry was back in the day and I'm thinking this was like oh god I don't even know when this took place like the I don't know when was this for let me look at when this was first published okay oh oh and this is also a good summary it says 
The horrifying conditions in the meatpacking industry in the early 1900s are revealed through the experiences of immigrants as they try to make a living working in the Chicago stockyards. So, so yeah. So this is, you know, a piece of history and I just really wanted it. I really wanted to read it. It's kind of a classic. I kind of put it in that in that category, but really excited about it. So All right. Next one. Oh my god. Okay. So, when I found this book and it's in such great condition, Sarah's Key by Tatiana de Rosne. And this is a pretty popular book. Uh, many people have heard of it. There is a movie about it. This was originally published in its historical fiction, 2007. It was originally published in 2007, you know, so it's, it's, it's a little older. Not that old. I have never read this, but I did watch the movie with my sister years ago. And the movie crushed me. It crushed my soul and it was moving and it was it was wow and it's based on the book you know and I it's something like even though I watched that movie at that time and I really liked it I did not want to read it for a long time because I was like this is a lot I just watched this movie it's gonna be like a million times worse to read about it but I saw it and I was like, I think it's time. I want to own this. I want to read this and, you know, basically break my own heart. But anyway, so this is what it says. Paris, July 1942. Sarah, a 10 year old girl, is taken with her parents by the French police as they go door to door arresting Jewish families in the middle of the night. Desperate to protect her younger brother, Sarah locks him in a bedroom cupboard, their secret hiding place and promises to come back for him as soon as they are released. 60 years later, Sarah's story intertwines with that of Julia Jarmond, an American journalist investigating the Roundup. In her research, Julia stumbles onto a trail of secrets that link her to Sarah and to questions about her own romantic future. So, yeah, there's, it's just, it'll kill you. But I'm glad I, I found it. It's in wonderful condition. It's a beautiful book. And I'm going to read it someday soon. So. Whew, there's that one. Um, ooh, this one. Okay. The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold. This was very famous. And it probably is still famous. And this came out years ago. But it was made into a movie as well. I've never read the book. I've never seen the movie. It It's... But when I saw it, and it's in decent condition, hardback, I was like, I gotta get it because it's probably good. So this is what it says. When we first meet Susie Salmon, she is already in heaven. As she looks down from this strange new place, she tells us in the fresh and spirited voice of a 14-year-old girl, a tale that is both haunting and full of hope. In the weeks following her death, Susie watches life continuing without her. Her school friends trading rumors about her disappearance, her family holding out hope that she'll be found, her killer trying to cover his tracks. As months pass without leads, Susie sees her parents' marriage being contorted by loss, her sister hardening herself in an effort to stay strong, and her little brother trying to grasp the meaning of the word gone. And she explores the place called heaven. It looks a lot like her school playground with the good kind of swing sets. There are counselors to help newcomers adjust and friends to room with, Everything she ever wanted appears as soon as she thinks of it, except the thing she wants most, to be back with the people she loved on earth. With compassion, longing, and a growing understanding, Susie sees her loved ones pass through grief and begin to mend. Her father embarks on a risky quest to ensnare her killer. Her sister undertakes a feat of remarkable daring, and the boy Susie cared for moves on, only to find himself at the center of a miraculous event. So... I mean, it sounds so good, and it's such an interesting, different point of view. I've never heard of a book written from the point of view of a murder victim after they're dead, and then kind of seeing the aftermath of the, their, the fact that they're missing, or that they're dead, or killed, or whatever. So it's fascinating. It is a fascinating idea, and I'm really excited to read it. And it'll probably make me cry, but I'm excited about this one, so... So I got that one. 
Um, ooh, the next ones. Okay. Ugh, the Monster of Florence, a true story by Douglas Preston with Mario Spazi. Spazi. I am so glad I found this. So I've seen this book, like the cover, in so many times, but I can't remember where. Maybe documentaries or like maybe it was referenced in because I listened to a lot of podcasts but anyway this is about a serial killer a real life serial killer that was the monster of Florence okay so this is what it's about so it says Douglas Preston fulfilled a lifelong dream when he moved with his family to a villa in Florence upon meeting celebrated journalist Mario Spezi Preston was stunned to learn that the olive grove next to his home had been the scene of a horrific double murder committed by one of the most infamous figures in Italian history, a serial killer who ritually murdered 14 young lovers. He has never been caught. He is known as the Monster of Florence. Fascinated by the tale, Preston began to work with Spazi on the case. Here's the true story of their search to uncover and confront the man they believe is the monster. In an ironic twist of fate that echoes the dark traditions of the city's bloody history, Preston and Spazi themselves become targets of a bizarre police investigation. So, I mean, this sounds so good. It's a true story. And also, I was obsessed with the TV show Hannibal. And there's a whole season that kind of takes, I think it takes place in Florence. And there, there's, there's mentions of this. And then also, I think one of the Hannibal movies, there's a mention of this. It kind of takes place there. So, I mean, I know about this I have a familiarity but do I know much about the case itself no I don't so this is a true crime you know oh I'm just gonna love it and I love it's in great condition it's hardback and I think I got it for like two dollars and oh, I'm so excited about this one like this was a lucky find for me Oops. okay next one ah okay Gone Girl by Jillian Flynn so I've read I've read a book by Jillian Flynn I read Dark Places and it was okay it wasn't great it wasn't bad it was just okay but I've never read this this is probably one of her more famous books but it was also made into a movie and I loved the movie the movie was so good oh my god and if the book is anything like the movie I'm gonna love the book so it's in good condition. I can't wait to read it. I hope, I mean, hope, more than likely it's gonna be better than the movie, but the movie was so good. So even though I know what happens and stuff, I still think it's gonna be worth reading. So I'm excited about this. Oh, and if you don't know what it's about, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, and also, okay, let me read you the back, sorry. On a warm summer morning in North Carthage, Missouri, it is Nick and Amy Dunn's fifth wedding anniversary. Presents are being wrapped and reservations are being made when Nick's clever and beautiful wife disappears. As the police begin to investigate, the town golden boy parades a series of lies, deceits, and inappropriate behavior. Nick is oddly evasive and he's definitely bitter, but it, is he really a killer? So this book, the story itself, at least the movie, it reminds me so much of the Lacey Peterson murder. Scott Peterson, Lacey Peterson, there are so many, there are so many things that are the exact same or very similar with that case, which is a real case, and this, this book. So I think that the author took a lot of inspiration from this case, this the Scott Peterson, Lacey Peterson case, super fascinating complex case and so that's another and I'm I'm really interested in that case like I've read about it documentaries all that stuff and um yeah so I mean I'm I love that I really think this was very much inspired by it so so reading about it will also kind of like be reading about the real case you know kind of so excited about it um oh okay so this is the next one I found, The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. Um, this is a very tiny little book. It's famous, I've heard of it, and I thought I should get it. Okay, so this is what it says. It says, 
Acclaimed by critics, beloved by readers of all ages, taught everywhere from grade schools to universities across the country, and translated all over the world. The House on Mango Street is the remarkable story of Esperanza Cordero, told in a series of vignettes, sometimes heartbreaking, sometimes deeply joyous. It is the story of a young Latina girl growing up in Chicago, inventing for herself who and what she will become. Few other books in our time have touched so many readers. So, yeah, I remember hearing about, like, while I was in school that other classes were reading this and stuff. We never had to read it for any of my classes. But I thought I really should buy this because, oh, I know this is weird, I'm Latina. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> I'm a Latina, and weirdly enough, I don't really like reading about my people. <laughs> it's not that I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I, I just tend not to gravitate towards it. You know, I, I, I'm not generally interested in the material, which probably sounds terrible, but it's just the truth. And I don't know why. I mean, I, I feel like I'm very American. I'm very Americanized. I grew up here. My, my parents grew up here. Um, their parents, you know, were born here and stuff. So I mean, I'm third generation American. And there are many, I mean, I have read stories that were about Latinas or about my people, my culture. But I found, I remember when I read them, I, I couldn't connect. I didn't feel connected to it. I kind of didn't enjoy it. And I remember thinking, this is weird. I probably should like this, you know? So I kind of stopped reading them. But then I thought, well, I'm older, you know, I really am. I mean, even though I'm very Americanized, I actually have a very very close relationship with my own culture but my culture my culture the way I was raised with my parents and the way that we you know had our Latino culture it's very different than what I read about and so I think that's why it's really hard for me to to connect with with stories that are about Latinos or the struggle or something and and not that that's bad because of course everybody's different but I think when when I first started reading about about my culture I expected to like it more and I didn't you know and but I'm 28 now you know I, I'm not a teenager anymore I think that's like the last time I picked up something about Latinos but um but yeah I think this is a, a good book I, I want to read it and give it another chance you know read more about my own culture and the way other other people in my culture experience life and stuff so that's why I got this one um the next one oh my god so the next one is The Help by Katherine Stockett hardback beautiful condition wonderful condition I had to get it I've never read this. I've watched the movie and the movie is so good. I mean, I've watched the movie over and over again. Oh, I love the movie. The story, it's amazing. I just, I love it. And I really wanna read the book and I'm so glad I found it. Oh, and if you've never watched the movie, go watch it. <laughs> so um, this is says, 22 year old Skeeter has just returned home after graduating from Ole Miss. She may have a degree, but it is 1962 Mississippi, and her mother will not be happy till Skeeter has a ring on her finger. Skeeter would normally find solace with her beloved maid Constantine, the woman who raised her, but Constantine has disappeared, and no one will tell Skeeter where she has gone. Abilene is a black maid, a wise, regal woman raising her 17th white child. Something has shifted inside her after the loss of her own son, who died while his bosses look the other way. She is devoted to the little girl she looks after, though she knows both their hearts may be broken. Minnie, Abilene's best friend, is short, fat, and perhaps the sassiest woman in Mississippi. She can cook like nobody's business, but she can't mind her tongue, so she's lost yet another job. 
Minnie finally finds a position working for someone too new to town to know her reputation, but her new boss has secrets of her own. Seemingly as different from one another as can be, these women will nonetheless come together for a clandestine project that will put them all at risk. And why? Because they are suffocating within the lines that define their town and their times. And sometimes lines are made to be crossed. So this book, this story is incredible. It is, there is truth to it because in the 60s, this was a thing. And I didn't know this before I watched the movie is that a lot of a lot of white families had black maids or black nannies that raised their children. Of course not all of them, but a lot of them did and I didn't know that was a thing. And then uh it's just I don't know, there's a lot to it. There's a there's racial, you know, issues with it. There's history, there's you know, women, there's it's about feminism kind of. It's amazing. So, I can't wait to read it. All right, next book. Okay, we have two more to go. This next one, I don't know why. I like these weird books sometimes. This is the strange, it says strange history, mysterious artifacts, macabre legends, boneheaded blunders, and mind-blowing facts. So it's kind of like a, oh, it's so hard to see that. It's like a factual set. I don't know. But I really like facts. I like learning. I love things that are mysterious. I love artifacts. And I love things that are macabre. <laughs> so when I saw this, I was like, oh my God, this is so up my alley. Random stuff, the strange cat history, the first political sex scandal, you know, the Evita mummy, Ooh. men and their egos, the worst hole in the history of golf. What was I say, whores of Babylon? Just weird stuff that's happened in the history, you know, weird artifacts, weird facts and I just love stuff like this so I saw it and I was like and it's in good condition too beautiful brand new I mean so I love it and can't wait to to read some stuff out of here oh okay so this is the back okay it says did you know Julius Caesar was afraid of cats Mozart was infatuated with farts Neanderthals invented the mullet Columbus saw a UFO from the deck of the Santa Maria a con man nearly convinced New Yorkers to saw off Manhattan. Queen Victoria smoked marijuana to cure her cramps. The word pants comes from the name of a 16th century clown. The Mayans played a game like soccer with human heads. The ancient Roman poet Virgil held a funeral for a housefly. <laughs> oh my god, so just weird stuff like that. Yeah, so I, I like that, so... <laughs> good lord okay the last book is funny pride and prejudice and zombies oh god by jane austen and seth graham smith this is a new york times bestseller beautiful wonderful pristine condition this has been around for a while a lot of people know about this i personally am not into zombies that much but i I'm very into Jane Austen and um, the idea of this happening is so crazy and ridiculous that it just might work and a lot of people like this so I finally picked it up and I want to read it so it says oh god it is a truth universally acknowledged that a zombie in possession of brains must be in want of more brains so begins Pride and Prejudice and Zombies an expanded edition of the beloved Jane Austen novel, featuring all new scenes of bone-crunching zombie mayhem. As our story opens, a mysterious plague has fallen upon the quiet English village of Meryton, and the dead are returning to life. Feisty heroine Elizabeth Bennet is determined to wipe out the zombie menace, but she's soon distracted by the arrival of the haughty and arrogant Mr. Darcy. What ensues is a delightful comedy of manners with plenty of civilized sparring between the two young lovers, and even more violent sparring on the blood-soaked battlefield. Can Elizabeth vanquish the spawn of Satan and overcome the social prejudices of the class-conscious landed gentry, complete with romance, heartbreak, sword fights, cannibalism, and thousands of rotting corpses? Pride and Prejudice and Zombies transforms a masterpiece of world literature into something you'd actually want to read. <laughs> this is insane. 
what? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Jane Austen showed up here today and was like, what? This is what y'all did with my book. <laughs> it's crazy. It's insane. It's like, okay, it's not exactly like rewriting the Bible, but it kind of would be like rewriting the Bible, but add you know, zombies and vampires and werewolves. Like, can you imagine? It's just so weird, but it sounds really good. And I like retellings, especially of stories that I really love. And I really love Pride and Prejudice. I've read it a few times. And even though I'm not personally a huge fan of zombies, not that I hate zombies, some of the movies are really good, but that is not why I picked it up. I just thought like, oh, this is cool. I really might like this. So yeah, <laughs> Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Good Lord. So yeah, that's that's it, y'all. That's the 10 books. I think that's 10. <sighs> Those are the 10 books I got from Goodwill. I think all in all, I spent like $12 maybe. maybe. Oh no, thir it was a 13 because I rounded up. Yeah, $13 on 10 books. And if I had bought all of those at regular price, I, oh my God, it would have been over a hundred dollars, probably more. I'm not good with numbers, but anyways, so that was my book haul, my Goodwill book haul. I hope you guys liked it. And, uh, let me know if you've read any of these books, what you think about them, um, or any other books that you think I might like. Um, I'm always up for suggestions. So yeah, uh, like, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Um, her, 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 so this again was another, sorry, it's like really bright. Maybe I should turn on my light. Uh, womenhood, womenhood. God, what is that called? Why am I blanking on this word? For the most, like, feminism. Good Lord. Good Lord.